last three decades of my life, especially as I climbed the professional ladder into leadership roles in ExxonMobil, have been quite exciting and enlightening. Given that the corporation is a melting pot of persons from diverse nationalities, backgrounds, and disciplines, it was often fascinating in meetings to observe the mannerism and distinction of colleagues. And I particularly became intrigued with engineers. I witnessed their diligence and a focus on flawless execution of tasks. Whether it was about drilling wells to enable the extraction of crude oil, or facilitating its flow, or the designing, building, and maintenance of the numerous complex and humongous operational facilities, the engineers were always at their best. I watched as similar diligence was deployed to ensure that the environment and indeed personnel were safe and protected. So I have been opportune to see your profession at its best. And truth be told, your colleagues contributed immensely towards making me a better professional and manager. I thank you for picking a conference theme which speaks to unlocking opportunities for your members, given the trend in acquirable state towards infrastructure, consolidation, expansion, and industrialization. I want to align myself with the definition of sustainable infrastructure assets by International Institute for Sustainable Development, Canada, as those which do the following. One, lower carbon and environmental footprints. Two, protect natural ecosystems. Three, provide resilience to changing climates. Four, optimize the use of natural ecosystems and their infrastructure services. Five, move beyond compliance with core labor standards and human rights. Six, trigger technological and industrial innovation. Seven, increase investment in education and research and development. Eight, increase employment. Nine, demonstrate financial viability. Ten, crowding domestic investors and businesses. Eleven, increase foreign direct investment. And twelve, bring value for money for taxpayers and investors. In a more general term, infrastructure and industrialization developments must be executed by striking a balance between environmental protection, well-being, and economic prosperity for the benefits of both the present and the future generations. Additionally, sustainable infrastructure and industrialization are central to achieving the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, as well as the climate objectives of the Paris Agreement. Given that current infrastructure systems account for more than 60% of global greenhouse gas emissions, even though infrastructure is only explicitly mentioned in SDG 9, which talks about industry, innovation, and infrastructure, it underlies all the other socioeconomic SDGs. It is important to note that countries, especially developing economies, mainstreaming social and environmental benefits in infrastructure planning will achieve multiple benefits, such as good health and well-being, through clean transport systems, that's in SDG 3, access to affordable and clean energy, SDG 7, sustainable industrialization, SDG 9, and responsible production and consumption, SDG 12. Sustainable infrastructure and industrialization will also contribute to protecting and fostering the sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems. Similarly, better plans, transport infrastructure, and improved connectivity will reduce inequalities within communities 
as well as promote positive climate actions. Why am I listing all this? It is because engineers, being the key professionals in the infrastructure and industrialization sector, must create sustainable solutions into designs, construction, and operations of infrastructure and industrial facilities going forward. Innovation and diffusion of new technologies are indispensable for economic growth. They lead to increased productivity and to the creation of wealth and economic well-being. The point here is that we need to do something about encouraging our engineers, just that as the engineers must help solve our numerous problems. After all, the role of the engineer is to look inwards and find solutions to our unique challenges. And we have a lot in almost all sectors of our economy. Education, health, agriculture, security, power generation. You can be players helping make life much easier. It is in this regard that I must salute the courage of engineers like Jerry Isaac Malu, who started manufacturing ventilators from locally available materials during the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic, with the support of Plateau State Government. There was a similar production undertaken by Nigeria uh, Military Defense Industries Corporation, Nikon, an organization that I personally believe has the capacity to do a lot more for this country. Only recently, a team of engineering based multidisciplinary researchers under the ages of Laboratory of Industrial Electronics, Power Devices, and New Energy Systems has generated 500 kVA of electricity using locally fabricated gasification plants for the University of Nigeria and Suka. The leader of the research team, Professor Emerike Ijogu, of the electrical department must be commended for this bespoke solution. How can I also forget the award received by our wisdom, EU, a mechanical engineering graduate of the University of Uyo, for building a prototype of a 3D printing machine, which won the first position in the sixth edition of the Nigerian University's Research and Development Fair that took place in Oka, I think that was 2016. Hmm? My point is this, there are many other sectors begging for intervention, and our engineers must wake up to their calling, just as we must encourage them. When innovation exists in an economy, and the necessary infrastructure is provided, it can support the economy of a nation to bring about employment, additional income, and growth. Aquaibom State is not an exception. The big question is, how does Aquaibom State get to achieve all this? What should you be doing to make Aquaibom State an enviable state where people seek to reside, do business, and a state that is respected for its forward-looking and healthy economy. I recognize that while the measurement standards for development may have been blurred in Nigeria, given what some sections of government claim as dividends of democracy, I personally believe that any objective mind would acknowledge the vital achievements recorded in Akwaibon State. Truth be told, Particularly given the country's difficult circumstances, it takes an audacious mind to dream big and drive the execution of life-changing programs. Herein lies the accomplishments of Governor Odum Emmanuel. This governor has been able to forge ahead with projects that will not only unleash the economic potentials of the state, 
but will create an oasis out of a region of despondency. But what does it take for you to play a crucial role in this development space? In answering this question, we must seek refuge in one of the mission statements of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, which is the commitment to collaborate with, influence, and provide quality advice to the various arms of government, industry, commerce, academia, and the society at large to uplift the country. Given that this is so broad in scope, it also implies that the footprints of your members should be evident across the landscape. You need to do some soul searching, ensure professionalism in all your offerings so that your work speaks for you. You need to walk the talk when it comes to the cardinal objectives of promoting and enforcing high standards in performance and professional ethics amongst their members. You need to impact society positively so that your offerings are roundly appreciated. The era of failed roads, collapsed buildings, incomplete and abandoned projects, unjustifiable cost variations must go away. And those members who act otherwise need to be publicly sanctioned. You need to have conversations that will guide the government on what types of infrastructure to provide, location standards and specifications, budgets and execution duration. You need to encourage innovation to promote economic growth, generating employment and income for our people. You must therefore be versatile with the latest versions of engineering innovation tools and best practices. Lest you forget, technologies are changing rapidly as the world converges towards more sustainable solutions. And the only way to keep abreast of technology is through continued education. You need to exploit the numerous opportunities in biotechnology, renewable energy, blockchain technology, agricultural tools, and mechanization, information communication technology, there are so many. You need to continue to partner with our tertiary institutions to improve the standards of engineering and science education and ensure that the curriculum is particularly tailored towards the needs of our Kwaibom state. You must also promote projects with greener footprints and advocate for the execution of the same using the most environmentally responsible approaches. My dear engineers, you must always think about your contributions to solving the challenges that exist today. Because by so doing, you bring to the fore the importance of your profession. Never be afraid to start something. Experiment and allow solutions to grow naturally. Understand that a lot of industries, new technologies, and solutions of today started small, and some started in someone's garage, backyard, or bedroom. As I conclude, I'll be remiss not to offer a few words of advice to our young ones. Despite the gloomy picture about Nigeria, I know we have some very talented youths who are ready to excel if given the right support. In this state, I have encountered thousands, especially those mentored through the instrumentality of the Noyo Toro Foundation. And my message has always been for our youths to imbibe the following values. Number one, hard work. We all must admit that we have a poor work culture in this country, which is a sure barrier to our competitiveness as a nation. This must stop. People must be reminded that they do not need to be the best, but should always give their best in all circumstances. 
This was my winning formula in ExxonMobil, and I was rewarded appropriately. Number two, discipline. This really speaks to how engineers carry out their tasks, and it therefore requires no extensive discussion. It is also about the how and not the what. We must be reminded that the result is not more important as the means by which it was achieved. And it is only a disciplined approach that will birth and replicate excellence. Third one, integrity. Anyone who has established a business in Nigeria must have experienced the lack of integrity by some staff. This is becoming a pandemic. Things are so bad that it is almost as if the only Nigerian who is not corrupt is one yet to have an opportunity. We must work hard to change this narrative. Finally, let it be clearly understood that Aquaibon State holds boundless opportunities, human and material, but these opportunities must be thoughtfully harvested for the good of its entire people and not just a few. But it will require working together to get there. Collaboration with the government, collaboration with the education sector, industries, investors, and businesses, finance entities, and anyone willing to bring new technologies is critical. As the industrialization efforts continue, there is a role for each of us. And my prayer is that we can see beyond any despair and play a part devotedly for tomorrow's joy. Those who know me well will attest that I have always strived to be part of a solution wherever I find myself. Focusing on matters that uplift rather than on matters that degrade. Building capacity instead of stifling growth and creating wealth instead of wallowing in consumption. That is who I am. Aquaibom State is poised for greatness and all of you seated here must be part of that journey. I am already a part of it. Thank you for listening. God bless. Thank you.